whatever Jesus did, there was always a purpose and a design behind everything that he lived, everything he said, and all that he experienced while he was here on earth. Because you see, he was sent to earth by his Father. He volunteered while in heaven to come to earth in order to do and accomplish what the Father wanted him to do, which was to reveal where God was at, what God wanted, and what God required of us. Because we're told that the prophets spoke about the Father, but that we didn't get the message clearly or understand it completely. So in order to have a more perfect understanding of who God is, of what God requires of us, of how God wanted us to know Him, He sent His only Son so there would be no doubt. And likewise, He provided also the opportunity by sending His Son to give us a way that we might be able to accomplish that which He required of us when He spoke to us on the mountaintop as He spoke to Sinai as he spoke to the children of Israel that he had brought out of Egypt, as he gave to Moses the law, because the children of Israel had become so lost in their way. They had been so infused by Egypt. They had become so much like a part of the world that they were no longer separated unto God himself. They had become compromised in their knowledge of God. They had become one with the people of Egypt, and they were slaves that were set free and didn't know how to rule themselves. So God set forth with Moses the law of Mosaic law, a law of God written on stone so that they could accomplish and become the people of God if they chose to agree to that covenant that he would make with them, that he would be their God and they would be his people if they would do as he said to do. That's interesting because it's on the mountaintop and Moses is there and Moses is telling the people, look, if you are willing to do what God has said to do, he will be your God and you will be his people. But if you don't do what he said to do, then he wants nothing to do with you because he even said that he would destroy you and start over with me. But the reality is, is that God chose to give the people his law. And so too we see on the Sermon on the Mount. Again, we're on another mountaintop and we're farther along and we see the Son of God bringing to us God's heart, God's law. Because Jesus says this, he says, These sayings of mine I will liken a man that does them unto a wise man who built his house upon a rock. And when the storms came, when the law came, when all the circumstances of the enemy of the world, of Rome, of Egypt of anything in life comes against it, nothing shall cause it to fall because it's a house built upon a rock. But if you don't do what I said, if you don't do what I said to do, you'd be a foolish man who doesn't accomplish what God has designed and purposed for me to tell you to do because these things of mine, I am telling you to do because I am the Son of God, the Son of Man. And so we see in the Sermon on the Mount, just like at the time when law was given, just at the time when God had become so far from the people, Jesus comes to explain it again. Even as when the people had become so wrapped up in Egypt, now the people have become so wrapped up in Mosaic adherence to a Judaic law that had separated them from God instead of bringing them to God. So Jesus said, look, I have given you blessings that God has blessed you with in the Beatitudes. I am saying to you now, listen to me. And the people were astonished when he said that because he's saying and claiming the same thing that God himself said to the children of Israel. Do this or you aren't a part of me. Do this or don't do it, as Jesus said. So we looked at that and we recognized that now we come to a place where Jesus is speaking directly to the heart of the Jew, directly to the person like you who knows what God wants from you, but you don't know how to live it, who has a religion, who has an idea about God, who has a concept of getting to know God from a distance, like the children of Israel standing at the foot of the mountain of Sinai but not going all the way up. Just like here on this mountain, Jesus brought his disciples unto himself. 
and the people were down below. And yet, and yet we read at the end of the Sermon on the Mount that he spoke to them and they recognized him as having authority, but not like the scribes and Pharisees because he spoke as though he were the one in charge. And so Jesus tells us something that's radical and extreme and just beyond anything that man had said to them before because he makes a very distinctive point here that no one else could make. He says, think not, in verse 17, think about this carefully, listen to every single word. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. He fulfills the law. He fulfills the prophets. What was the law given for? What was the prophets given for? They were to bring you to God the Father so that you could know Him and be with Him and experience Him and to have personal relationship with Him. But because you're in sin, because you were born in sin, conceived in sin, and you'll die in sin, there's only one way that you could ever come up the mountain in the same place that Moses did. There's only one way that you could ever come into the presence of God as being holy. And the people knew that they were unholy because the scribes and the Pharisees had described that if you even come into the holy place of the temple, you would be devastated and you would be annihilated. And they knew by way of the Ark of the Covenant that likewise, because the prophets had told them they couldn't even touch it, so Jesus says, don't think that I've come to destroy the law. Don't think that I've come to destroy the prophets. I didn't come to destroy them. But he didn't say I come to enforce them either. He said, I come to fulfill them. So, if it's to fulfill, then is there something needed? Or is there something that the law and the prophets was pointing to? Is there something that the law and the prophets was meant to accomplish? In other words, is Jesus saying, do the law? No, he's not saying do the law. He says, do these sayings of mine and you will fulfill the law. He's saying, do these sayings of mine and you'll fulfill the prophets. Where does he say do these sayings of mine? In Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. Read it. You will find that Jesus says, do it. Do it. He's telling you to do what he says. The law only brings you to a place of understanding why he is fulfilling the law. The law only brings you to a place of recognizing that you are in sin. It causes you to know that you can't come all the way up the mountain unless you do what Jesus says. The law and the prophets both complement each other in showing you what God wants for you and they determine what you need to do in order to come close to and to know him and Jesus says I'm going to take you farther in I'm going to take you all the way up the mountain I'm going to bring you into the presence of God if you do these things I'm telling you to do because he said I will fulfill I will keep the Ten Commandments. I will fulfill the Ten Commandments in you. I will. You can't. I will fulfill the 613 mitzvot, or the commandments, or the instructions, or the positives and negatives that Judaism has created by the scribes and the Pharisees that I did not say there were 613, but I tell you that the Law and the Prophets will be fulfilled in me. Because I came to fulfill the Law and the Prophets. I did not come to destroy Judaism. I came to fulfill it. I came to complete it. I came to make it perfect. Because even the scribes and the Pharisees knew that Judaism was not perfect. Only God was perfect. So he says, I am going to fulfill perfection in you. How? By I am perfect. For you see, Jesus is the fulfillment of all the law and the prophets. He is the accomplishment, the fulfillment, and the perfection of God. As you see what Jesus tells you to do, he is telling you what he has done, what he is doing, and how he lived his entire life as the Son of Man. He doesn't tell you to do something he didn't do. 
As a matter of fact, when you start on the Sermon on the Mount, you'll begin to recognize that all of it, from beginning and to end, is a perfect testimony of what Jesus did and said. So he meant what he said, said what he meant, and he walked the walk and he talked the talk, because he did it. He didn't do it of his own strength or ability. He said, it's not of me, but only those things I see my Father doing. And he said, it's not of me, but the Holy Spirit was filling him and causing him with ability to do those things. Now in heaven, when he was the Son of God, as God and with God, of course. But when he came to earth, he was the Son of Man, as dependent upon God as you and I. So when Jesus comes and says, I didn't come to destroy the law of the prophets, he's not telling you to go out and do Ten Commandments. He's not telling you to go out and do the prophets. He's not telling you to go out and do 613 mitzvot. He's not telling you to be a Jew. He's not telling you to be a Christian. He's telling you, do these sayings of mine and you will fulfill the law and the prophets. That's what Jesus is saying. That's why Christianity is a reality, not a religion. That's why it cannot be called Judeo-Christian. It can't be called Christian. It can be called a relationship of Jesus Christ living in you because it is God who works in you, both to do and to will of his good pleasure, and he will accomplish in you the law and the prophets. Grace was extended, but it doesn't have to do with grace. Grace is what God gave to you but what is fulfilled in you is the law and the prophets as they exist because your sinful flesh cannot be in the presence of God himself. But the Spirit of God, when you become born again, can abide in God's presence for eternity because of what Jesus did. Because Jesus is the fulfillment of all that God required. God said it himself. He said, this is my beloved Son in whom I am more than pleased. I am well pleased. I find him acceptable in my sight. He did not bring his godliness into the world, but in the world he demonstrated godliness by his life, and God accepted him in his sight. And so God chose his only begotten son to fulfill the requirements of God for you and me. And all one thing is Jesus asking you to do. Only one thing is God telling you to do. And only one thing has Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount. And only one thing does it mean here when he says, Think not that I am come to destroy the law and the prophets. I am come not to destroy but to fulfill. Is will you now do what I'm telling you to do? Will you now do what I say unto you? And Jesus said, and you need to look at that and recognize that what Jesus said is how you will fulfill the law and the prophets.